I'm Shane Bangle with the Mana Group, and today I want to talk to you about some changes that are going on in the real estate industry. Some of you may have heard that um, there was a big lawsuit and there's changes. Some refer to it the NAR settlement. Um, there was a big lawsuit, uh, Seltzer versus Burnett, and made a lot of changes in the real estate industry. So it's not as prevalent, I would say, in the state of Washington or Idaho because they were a little ahead of the curve in how they handled business. But in some other states, there it was very common for real estate agents to go and say, it costs X amount. And generally speaking, I'd say it was right around 6%. Say 6% to list your home. And what sellers were not aware of was that they were offering 3%, half of that commission to a buyer's agent and what we would call cooperating commission. And that was kind of standard practice in the business for a very long time. And what it does is it incentivizes buyer's agents to be out in the market trying to drum up buyers and trying to bring them to a listing. And so very commonly, they, they would do cooperating brokerage um, payment. The issue was that that MLSs, so MLSs are multiple listing services, so a Spokane Association of Realtors, carries every list, every house that is for sale, generally speaking, besides for sale by owners and other outliers like wholesalers and things like that, are listed on the Spokane MLS. And what was happening is the MLS had a rule in order to list it on the MLS, you had to offer cooperating brokerage compensation. It was a requirement. Now, some people did different things with that. They would offer a low amount. They would offer 1%, $2,000, something like that, uh, which was allowable. So that amount that you were gonna pay a buyer's broker was negotiable, but it always felt hidden in other states. Um, it would just they say, hey, our listing fee is 6%, and they wouldn't even tell a seller that they were giving 3% to a buyer's agent. So sellers sued saying, hey, it's not fair that I was paying for somebody else's services. There was no expectation in the industry that they would win this lawsuit because it had been kind of a standard practice. It is, it is explained in the contract. It's not like hidden. Um, however, they did win the lawsuit, which created a huge antitrust settlement. Um, unfortunately, lawyers are gonna make the vast majority of that money that is available, so kind of a bummer for all of us, but it has caused some big changes in our industry. So now no longer on the MLS can you list what would be what we call cooperating brokerage uh, compensation. So you can't offer on the MLS, say, hey, I will pay a buyer's agent 3% if you bring me a buyer. So. Even though it can't be advertised on the MLS, it can still be marketed in other places. So right now, I'd say generally speaking, we're still seeing sellers offer compensation to a buyer's agent because you want, as a seller, you want somebody out there working and finding buyers, drumming up business, bringing them to your house. As a list agent, you know obviously you're getting that house prepped and ready and marketing it, and you're putting it on tons of different you know channels, media, advertising, to get people to see it, um, but you may now, sellers may offer less in buyer broker compensation. Um, eventually, we'll see how things pan out, what the industry does in response. In the immediacy, we have seen a national slight reduction in what we call buyer broker compensation. Um, that has reduced a little bit, so that's saving sellers a little bit of money. But now, list agents, they've always been having the conversation saying, hey, I generally, in Washington, Idaho, it's, you know, I list for X amount and then I offer X amount to incentivize buyers, buyers agents to come look at the home. Um, that's been pretty standard in Washington and Idaho. Um, so that's not really going to change on the list side, but now buyers agents need to be able to articulate what their value is and why they're worth what the compensation is that they're getting paid. And that is very important for our industry. I would say largely, um, you know, when you get into the industry, unfortunately, there's a pretty low threshold to get into real estate. You know, you don't have to go to college for four years. You don't have to go in specialty school. Um, because of that, typically when you start, you start as what we call a buyer's agent, and you learn how the industry works and you know how negotiations work. What is what's worth value? What's not worth value? Um, so you have 
I would say I mean, there are a lot of buyer's agents that might not be worth the amount of money that they get paid. Um, so it's gonna be difficult for them to explain to the consumer, hey, you want to hire me to help you and represent you in this and legally protect you because there's a lot of liability and there's a lot of exposure. This is a very big purchase. Well, if you've only been in the industry for three months and you haven't done any transactions uh, and you've only done 90 hours of coursework, are you qualified for the amount that you'll get paid is a big question. So you may see some internal changes in the industry, how people enter the industry because they're going to need a lot more tutelage, a lot more guidance. Generally that happens from a brokerage or from teams. That is a general process that will still happen. Overall, I think this is a net positive for our industry and for real estate as a whole. I do think we'll see uh, some slight adjustments in compensation to how real estate agents are paid and the amount that they're paid, but it also forces the industry to be more professional, more willing to demonstrate their value and therefore have to gain knowledge. So in the long run, this is a really, really good thing for the industry. It'll help the consumers and it'll also help the real estate agents be more knowledgeable and better at their job, which is very important. So these are some of the changes happening.